It's important for your app to stay up to date in order to give the latest social feeds, news, and weather reports to your users. But in truth, syncing too often can be the worst idea for the performance of your application. My name is Cole McCandless, and there's one hard and fast rule when it comes to syncing your data over the network. Do not oversync. I mean, it's a pretty common situation. Uh, the user has your app active, or maybe it was the last app they used, and you want to make sure that there's plenty of new data available for them so that they won't close your app or uh, let their attention wander elsewhere. So you sync. You sync a lot. You ping the server, you ask for new data, and bring it down as often as you can. But let's face it, this is a horrible idea. Uh, firstly, this destroys the user's battery. And as we've said before, networking is the single biggest battery hog there is. Uh, not only does it drain battery just to initialize the chip, but then it keeps it awake for an additional 20 to 60 seconds after you're done with your request, also drawing power. In fact, you can fall into a really bad place where each one of your networking requests ends up waking up the radio and paying this cost. Not ideal. Secondly, consider the sheer volume of bits that your app is now responsible for requesting on the user's phone. Uh, for users on restricted usage data plans, this can be a make or break crime. I mean, one app eating up a month's worth of bandwidth simply because it keeps pinging the server for new data? Not a good idea. And this is also a double whammy because the slower the connection, the longer the radio stays on to help transfer data, meaning that you're not only being taxed for bits on the wire, but also draining more battery as a result. So, uh, okay, so syncing too often is bad, but let's be realistic here. Your app needs the data in order to provide the user with the best experience. We can't just cut syncing out completely, right? And the truth is, you don't have to. There's a few handy tricks that you can employ which will give the user the same sense of functionality, but require much fewer requests. The key to this solution is understanding the difference between stuff that has to happen right now and stuff that can be delayed. Uh, for example, if the user takes an action requesting that their news feed updates right now, well, then you pretty much have to kick off that request. But really, the uh, second and third types are where you can actually start improving performance. The requests that happen on uh, regular intervals that keep things up to date, but don't need to happen right this second. If it's not super important right now, then you can be smarter about how it's synced. Case in point, you should really never pull the server regularly for updates. Uh, you're basically just wasting bandwidth and battery for the server to tell you that nothing's changed. Instead, it's better to leverage other services like Google Cloud Messaging, which will let the server signal the app when there's new content. This will reduce the amount of battery churn the phone is doing and reduce the overall number of server responses that you need to worry about. Now, if there's a situation where you simply have to sync, then make sure that you're not doing it on regular intervals. Uh, remember, this wastes resources, and most of the time, there won't be new content waiting for you. Instead, adopt a back-off pattern based on responses. Uh, for instance, if no new data is available, double the length you wait until you check again. If nothing's available the next time, double your wait length again. This will still allow you to sync against the data, but will slowly back away from higher activity based on how frequent the server-side information is updating. And don't forget, you can also adjust seek frequency based on user activity. Uh, for example, if you can detect that the user is driving or running, or if the phone has entered an the sleep mode, you can make a good assumption that they won't need data at the same rate. On uh, the other side though, if you've noticed that the phone has been asleep for eight hours and suddenly starts getting moved around, then there's a good chance the user has just woken up and it might be the right time to kick off a sync request. And finally, don't hesitate to adjust your sync frequency based on the state of the device. Uh, waiting for it to be plugged in or connected to Wi-Fi to do syncing helps keep the battery happy while users are out and about. And the good news is that you can update your app to adopt these patterns without having to write a massive amount of code. GCM Network Manager is a Google Play Services API which helps to schedule network-oriented tasks and handle batching for you. This greatly simplifies the implementation of common patterns such as uh, waiting for network connectivity, network retries, and exponential backoff. Basically, all the good stuff you need with one single helpful API. And if you're ever wondering how your application is using the network, make sure to check out the network traffic tool inside of Android Studio. It will easily show you the frequency of your data transfers and the amount of data transferred during each connection. Of course, that's what it all comes down to, right? Watch some videos, improve your app, make your users happier, but you're not done yet. That's why you need to check out the rest of the Android Performance Patterns content. And don't forget to join the Google Plus community as well. So keep calm, profile your code, and always remember, Perf Matters.